One of the most popular ways to experience autumn in Wyoming's Grand Tetons is thoroughly uplifting. Which brings us to Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. This famous ski area keeps its trams running all year long. The two and a half mile ride lifts visitors an ear popping 4,000 feet into another world entirely. Truth is, at more than 10,000 feet at the top of Rendezvous Mountain, fall colors can often include white. Yes, while the valley basks in a warm autumn sun, the peaks have been christened with an early season snowfall, leaving us walking on air. The Grand Teton Skywalk is, is literally brand new. We just opened it to the public on Labor Day weekend. And so that Grand Teton Skywalk um, gets you out and, and that feeling of being elevated up in, in, in the air and looking directly into Grand Teton National Park, which we believe is a national treasure. We were a little nervous when Andrew Way of the Jackson Hole Mountain Resort asked us to meet him up at Corbett's. Corbett's Couloir is, after all, Jackson Hole's notorious ski run, a skinny, steep slot in the rocks that tempts daredevils from around the world. It is certainly one of the most iconic ski runs in North America. Fortunately for this middle-aged body, our meetup is a couple of hundred yards away at Corbett's Cabin. My only challenge, strictly caloric. Corbett's Cabin is renowned for making the highest waffles in the world. You know, necessity being the mother of invention. Uh, we don't have potable water up here. And so we can warm food up, but we can't prepare it here. And so those waffle irons are going, you know, uh, morning, noon, and night at all times. Wow, it's so light and so delicious and all that non-fattening stuff on there. Thusly fortified, we are ready to tackle our steepest challenge up here in the clouds, the Via Ferrata. Via Ferrata is basically, it's a modified climbing that we do in the mountains. Ryan Ravinsky is a ski instructor in the winter at Jackson Hole Mountain Resort and manager of the Via Ferrata in the summertime. Yes, normally the Via Ferrata is a fair weather activity. Climbers clip into safety cables and are guided up the cliff face using iron rungs, ladders, and bridges. Think of rock climbing, but on a much easier scale where every time you have to do, would have to do an actual rock climbing move, there are ladder rungs and bolts that are in the rock that you can climb up. up. Of course, today, the weather gods have thrown us a curveball made of snow. Before we left Boston, I had the ski gloves in. I'm like, I'm not gonna need those. A week ago, you wouldn't have. Right. But we are determined to show these Rocky Mountain hotshots that hardy New Englanders aren't phased by a mere foot of fresh, wet snow. <sighs> nice work. <laughs> that was something. This is our seventh season up here, and it's been received really, really well. We're pretty excited about it. It's gaining momentum every single year as word gets out. Our last challenge, a wire bridge across a yawning void. Way to go. <laughs> it's only after our climb that we learn Chronicle has set a new record. Congratulations to you guys. You definitely broke ground today. This is definitely the most snow we've ever guided guests in. So good on you. And we get to name the route, I'm told now, or we have some naming rights. Chronicle Kulwar, maybe, something like that. And you were certainly the right man for the job. <laughs> that went very well done to the whole crew. And the Via Veradas were first built um, in the Italian Alps during World War one to mm -hmm. get troops over the Dolomites. Dolomites. Now they're a recreational opportunity in Europe. They're quite common throughout Europe. There aren't that many in the U.S. Most of them are out west, but more and more are being built because people like it. But if my job was hard there, uh, our photographer, Rich Ward, had to uh, climb and trudge through about a foot and a half of snow uphill a mile to get some of those shots. So he had the much harder job. That's than I amazing. Did. All yeah, of you guys, well him. done indeed. <laughs> Still ahead, a Western hat maker from Maine.